In this video, we're going to learn about two of the fundamental starting points of programming. Expressions, which are sets of commands that we can use to do calculations, and variables, which we can use to store the values that come back uh, from those calculations or expressions. Now, like we learned about last time, we're going to write our code in our text editor. So we don't have one open here, so I'm going to click on the new file and select a new R script. So let us save our results for later use. And we can then write sets of commands or expressions uh, that will return some values. And so maybe we do something as simple as, say, 2 plus 2. And we can then run that code uh, by clicking the Run button over here to run that line of code. And we can see that we have 2 plus 2 equals 4, which is the code that we wrote the expression that we wrote, and then it was run in the console and gives us back a value, which is 4. So an expression is any set of commands that returns a value. And so we could do a more biological example with some code. Let's say we've got a kangaroo rat weight, and it's in grams, but we want to be able to convert it into pounds. A lot of kangaroo rats weigh about 50 grams. And in fact, we can run a line of code that just has the number 50 on it if we want. And evaluating a number will just give us that number back. We could convert that 50 grams into kilograms by taking 50 and dividing it by 1,000. So this is another expression. And if we run it, we evaluate it and get a value out of 0.05. And that gives us the mass in kilograms. And so if we want to get the mass in pounds, we would have to take 50 divided by 1,000 and then multiply it by 2.2. And if we run just this line of code, uh, what we'll find is that the average kangaroo rat weighs about 0 0.1 pounds. So uh, imagine something that looks kind of like a tiny kangaroo uh, that only weighs a tenth of a pound and puts in your hand. It fits in your hand. They're, they're adorable. And we've been running our code line by line so far. And we can do that. And in fact, once we have a bunch of code, if we run a line, it'll execute down here in the console, and then our studio will move to the next line. And so if we keep pressing run, it will execute the code line by line in order. We can also select a whole chunk of code and click run and it will run all of that code and so we can see now it's run the first line and printed out the value it's run the expression on the second line and printed on the value and so on and there's one other way uh, that we can run code which is to run this entire file at once and we do that using source and in particular I'm going to click the down arrow over here and I'm going to choose source with echo and what we can see is that source has been run on the file, so the whole file's been run. And we can see that it's run the first line and got printed out the value, the second line, the third line, and so on. And then we want to just save our code so that we can use it again later. So we can click on the Save button or hit Control-S and give it a good descriptive name. And so in this case, we might call it K-Rat, short for Kangaroo Rat, weight analysis and hit enter and it'll store that as a dot r file which will let us run analyses later now this is a great starting point but we haven't stored any of these values yet right we've just printed them out to the screen and we want to be able to store them so that we can use them later and we do that using something called a variable and a variable is just a name with a value that's associated with it. And the way we do that is we first say the name, we first write the name of the variable. So let's say we want to start with weight in grams. We can use underscores to work like spaces between words. We can't have spaces and variable names. So this is like our space. And then we can use uh, 
one of two assignment operators. The most common one you'll see in R is this arrow, which is a less than sign followed by a hyphen. So it's basically saying take the thing on the right and store it in the name on the left, and then we can give it the value. Okay, and so this says take the number 50 and store it in weight in grams. And if we run that line of code, and we look over here in the environment tab, we'll now see that we've created a variable, weight in grams, and given it a value of 50. And if we then look at that variable by just running it on its own, we get back the value 50. And we can treat it just like the value itself. So we could take weight in grams, divide it by 1,000, and multiply it by 2.2 in order to get out our weight in pounds. And we can also store the results of calculations using variables back into new variables. And so what we really did wanted to do here was calculate a weight in pounds. So I'm going to say weight underscore LB for weight in pounds. And then I'm going to assign it this calculation, which is the weight in grams divided by 1,000 times 2.2. And if we run that, we can see we've now created a new variable, uh, weight in pounds, which has our value of 0 0.11. And we did that by basically looking up the value from weight in grams. The code puts 50 in here, divides it by 1,000, multiplies it by 2.2, and then stores the result of this entire expression, the value that comes out from this expression, into the variable weight in pounds. And the important thing to remember about variables is that they won't change unless you assign a new value to it directly. And this can be counterintuitive sometimes. So we've created weight in grams. And it's common to think that if we take weight in grams and multiply it by 2, we might change the weight in grams. We might double it. But that doesn't happen. Right? Weight in grams is still 50 even though we took weight in grams and multiplied it by two here. So if we want to change the weight, we have to assign it to assign it a new value. And so the only way we'll change the weight is if we say, let's assign it a new value. Now let's say 26 here, and we'll run, and now we see that the weight in grams changes. So that's the basic idea. Uh, we've got expressions, which are sets of commands that return a value, and variables, which let us store those values for later use.